Okay, so I am really excited for this call, actually, and I got some butterflies in my stomach and um, a little bit of a racing heart thinking about this call, and I sat down and conscientiously took some notes, and I thought about all of my experiences in the past three and a half years. How many times have I pushed for a rank in the past three and a half years? How many times have I gone for ruby, senior ruby, emerald, sapphire, diamond on, on three legs? And so I am speaking to you from a place of complete love, complete understanding, complete knowledge of having gone through the experience over and over and over and over again. And you know what the cool thing is? I haven't walked away. It hasn't shut me down. It hasn't made me hate this. It's made me love it even more. It's made me grow. It's made me learn leadership skills. I've learned so many things about what not to do and what to do. I've also learned how to pick myself back up after a push and keep my business going and even growing. And I've learned how to slide back and how to climb forward. Like all of the experiences that you guys are going through or will go through as you work on pushing for a rank. And so this is just coming from my heart because I feel like we have some really great things that we can talk about that can help you to move forward in a really positive way in your business and take 100% ownership of your own business. Because at the end of the day, it's your own business. And I can't be in charge of it all. Sonia can't be in charge of it all. Cher can't be in charge of it all. Phyllis, you know, we can't be in charge of it all. But what we can do is teach you how to manage a push, after the push, what to do, and how to continue to grow forward. Um, I am somebody that actually really believes in the value of a push. Not a push every single month, all the time, but I have only seen good things come out of people that rise the cream of the crop, right? Because you'll always have the cream of the crop and you'll have people that just die in a push because they don't know how to process it. They didn't really do it the right way or mentally they weren't in the right place or they don't want to take any accountability. So I've seen both ways, but the people that rise to the top, the cream of the crop, the push is what separates the wheat from the tares. It's what separates the people that are really committed and the people that were just kind of super casual. And if you're not really sure which one you are, that's okay. It's okay. You'll learn in the process. I believe that if you're here, you are a committed person and you're not casual. So I believe that the push is really powerful and really important because it shows you, number one, what you're made of and what you can consciously create. When you push for a goal, it's because you had to consciously create something. You had to come up with a plan and you had to execute the plan and create the outcome. That is a powerful thing because when you go through that experience, so many of you had your highest points ever, your highest enrollments ranked up over the last 60 days. Most of you on this call push for different things, or maybe you're not yet, but you're pushing this summer. You learned what is possible, and that is the value of the push. It separates and gets the cream at the top. It helps you to learn what you're capable of, and it also helps you to take accountability for your business. And I see one of two things happen in a push. I see people go through a push and either take full accountability for what happened in the push or what didn't happen or people that fall into victim mentality. Now at this point, every single one of us, I hope, raise your hand if you understand what I'm talking about when I say victim mentality. Everybody? Everybody. Yes, I can't see some of you because I got a black screen there. But Victim mentality is, gosh, that didn't go the way that I thought it should go. It's your fault. Or if I, if I had had this, I could have done that. Or it's not my fault because of X, Y, and Z. That's not coming from a place of consciously creating the outcome. In fact, when you live your life from that place, you are constantly being acted upon and not acting to create your life. And so if you are somebody that didn't have an outcome that you loved last month or didn't have an outcome that you loved in April or in the past you've pushed and you didn't have an outcome that you loved, 
where, where is your part in that? Because there's always a part that we play. And I've had to take accountability so many times. Like the first time I ever pushed for diamond, I didn't make it on my, on my um, first leg. And I had to take accountability for the things that I didn't do to set that up well. And it's just a learning experience. We take accountability, we don't beat ourselves up, and we chalk it all up to experience. And when you chalk it up to experience, you will learn so many things that will help you to become a better leader, that will help you to teach people how to rank up more effectively, and that will help you to maintain consistent growth over time which creates a robust residual income. Also teaches you how to show up every single day, day in and day out, whether you have a headache, whether you have a barfing baby, whether you, um, you know, things are stressful and you're, you know, selling a house like Christy Jacks is selling her house. We had two, two calls in a row today. She showed up to those calls. She, she said, that was my commitment. I'm going to do it. She was there. Not a convenient time because people are looking through her house all day long, but you make a commitment and you show up. And so um, I just, I love a great push. And honestly, we're going to continue to zero in and hone in on this team. And we are going to perfect the push. We're going to perfect it. And it's going to happen in 60 to 90 day cycles. And one of the very first people I ever listened to when I started my journey of network marketing was Eric Worre. Do you guys know who he is? Anybody? Okay, great. So he would be someone that would be great to listen to. Um, he is one of the like legends. He wrote the book Go Pro. It's a great, simple read on network marketing. He's an older guy, but he makes a lot of really great points. And I remember listening to like a 90 day push video that he did on YouTube. And I've listened to several of his videos. Another one of my favorite is the seven deadly sins of network marketing. That video by him is fantastic as well. It's W O R R E. And Eric, I think it's E R I C Eric worry. And you can just even go to Amazon and look up GoPro. It's a quick read. Okay. So um, he was one of the first guys I listened to, and I got this idea of uh, working your business in 60 to 90 day cycles. Now, riddle me this, okay? Why do you think Plexus has contests that typically are uh, three to four months long? Because it's in a cycle, right? Businesses go in cycles. And so they know what they're doing right? Like it, it's designed to help you to ramp up, to do the activity, to bring the people into your funnel and to reap a harvest. That's like what leaders retreat contest is. It's a 90 day cycle. So it is a 90 day push. And when I look back on periods in my business where I have created a lot of growth and momentum, it came with a 60 to 90 day push. I am not always pushing for 60 to 90 days. You cannot push at the same level all the time. You'll burn out, but you can have periods of time where you push for 60 to 90 days and you can create an incredible result. If you never have a push, you will never create an incredible result. Did you hear me? If you never push, you will never create an incredible result. So it's something that you have to embrace. Now, some of us struggle with this because we're like, oh, I want my life to be in balance and I, I need to be present all the time when my kids are home and it's summer and all I can do is manage my kids. B to the S. That's all I have to say, okay? I have six kids. That's a lot of them. They're home all summer. I have help. Okay, maybe you can't hire help like I have, but even before I had this help, which started in January, I would, hi I would find whoever I could find to come over for like two or three hours a couple times a week and help me. So how can you create a solution to help you? It's all about empowering you. Remember, we're not victims. We're consciously creating what we want. So find that solution. And in finding that solution, you can create a push, whatever that push means to you. So again, that's just kind of like Eric Worre 
If you want to watch and listen to some of his stuff, you want to read his book, it's an easy summer read. It really helped me to kind of understand network marketing. And really, um, when I was, I was actually sitting on the toilet working my business today, doing my business, working my business. And I was sitting there and I was thinking about how sometimes we get all bent out of shape. Like, oh my gosh, we're offering so many incentives. We're doing such a push. This is like such a, oh, like this is so much. And I was thinking about traditional businesses and I was thinking about like Black Friday and I was thinking about Memorial Day sales and Labor Day sales and Christmas sales and how companies will do crazy ridiculous sales and they will drive their profits through the roof. Do you think like after that target's like, oh man, I wish I hadn't done that sale. I just made like $10 billion. I mean, I had to pay out like 500 million. Like I'm just I'm really upset that I did that. Do you think a traditional business thinks that way? No. They understand that there's going to be a price to pay to create a profit. And so you have to shift your mind into being a powerful creator and a business person. You understanding what you make is important. You understanding how an incentive works out, and this is not aimed at anyone, but you understanding how an incentive works out and how it's going to pay it forward into your business is so important. I have worked with so many people over the years that cannot wrap their brain around paying an incentive that say, I am just a gold ambassador. I shouldn't have to do any of that. And I say, okay, okay. So you don't want to invest anything in your business, but you want to get a crazy return. See, that is somebody using their business as a hobby. And so you have to shift your mindset. And maybe for that person, it's like investing five or ten dollars, you know, per welcome pack. It's just a starting point. But I have shifted the way that I look at incentives. I teach people from the very beginning now. My brand new ambassadors that want to go silver, if I offer ten dollars off a $199 welcome pack, I say I'll offer ten dollars off if you'll match it. And we can offer this person $20 off because you're making $41 commission off that welcome pack. So you're still going to make $31. So it's teaching your teams and yourself, okay, how much am I making off of this? What's the payout? What am I getting for my bonus? And how is this growing my team? So for example, if I was looking at Mel and Mel is just going off the hook and she's sponsoring five, six, seven, eight people a month, I might go to Mel and I might make up an incentive just for Mel's team. This is how you become a leader is you can pinpoint people and like this person is really going for it. I'm going to reward her for being a great business builder and I'm going to offer her $10 off. You don't have to do a blanket incentive, but I'm going to do it if she's also willing to play, to play and to pay. Because if you're not willing to invest in your business, why the heck should I invest in your business, right? Anybody? Does that make sense? Yes, even from a very beginning basic level. I've never had any pushback from anybody that I've brought up like that. So, um, so we're going to go through some basic principles that I thought of that can help you to continue momentum on your team so that you're not a one-hit wonder. So that you don't just like reach something once and that was the peak of your glory and then it's, it's all crumbling because you just killed yourself getting there and you just, you don't have anything in place to help you move forward, okay? And so the first thing that you need to do, you can make a list of these things if you want. I've got them written down here, but I can't guarantee that I'm going to type them up for you because you are accountable and you can take your own notes, right? Yes. Okay. Awesome. Okay. The, the first thing is I need you to sit down, like literally sit down in the next 24 hours and take stock. Take stock of where you are at. Who are your leaders? Who is showing up? Showing up to me means a couple of different things. It doesn't mean the same thing for every person. 
So some of the things that might indicate to me that somebody is showing up, that they get my time, that I'm going to pour into them and I'm going to help develop them are a couple of things. Maybe they are always doing the IPA challenges. Maybe they are always consistently enrolling three, four, five ambassadors every month. Maybe they are stepping up to volunteer in leadership roles. Maybe they are always in activity. I know they're always doing their IPA. They're tuning into the calls. They're communicating with me. I know what's going on. It's not radio silence. We have a dialogue. Those are the people that I feel like those are my leaders. Those are the people that show up. I don't care what speed they move at either. Like that actually doesn't matter at all to me because I am of the belief that you can build an absolute powerhouse team having slow growers. You, you don't have to have these like rocket ship, amazing people that like sponsor 50 people in a month. You don't have to have that, but you need people that are committed, people that are showing up. And those are some indicators that people are showing up or they're taking initiative, they're leading their own calls, they've got a business builder's thread, they're in there and engaged, those are people that are showing up. The second thing you have to take stock of is who has potential? Who has potential on my team that hasn't really been tapped into? Who's underdeveloped that my level one or my level two may not know how to develop? So who has potential? See, these are the things that I do immediately after a push. Like immediately. In fact, at the very end of every month, I do this. Like on the last day of the month, the month ends for me at 6 p.m. in Hawaii. I don't stop working until 7. You know what I do in that hour? Is I sit down right away and I review all of this stuff and I map out a plan for the next month. Now, if you can't do it the same night because it's 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock for you, the next day you're on this. You're mapping out your plan. Okay, so that's sitting down and taking stock of what you already have. The second thing you're gonna do after a big push is identify the unknown. Identify the unknown. So who do you not know in your organization? Who do you have that enrolls people that you have no connection to? This is something that's hard for some people, but I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna um, call somebody out, some people out here. Okay, Phyllis, are you disappointed that I, I met you through Barbie and I developed a relationship with you? Uh, not at all. <laughs> okay. Um, Kirsten, are you really disappointed that you're my level three and I care about your success in helping you? Not disappointed at all. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see who else here is like my level two. Morgan, are you, are you super bummed? You've come over and sat on my couch for three hours a couple times and we talked about life and business. Not at all. Are you pissed off that I know you? <laughs> I okay. love that you know me. <laughs> okay. So this business is about connection and you do not hold all the keys to the kingdom. I do not hold all the keys to the kingdom. Okay. You don't have every personality trait and every skill and every strength that every person under you needs. And so if you are washing your hands and being a hands-off leader, you're paralyzing yourself. So at the end of the month, I'm like, who joined my team? I, I'm going to send them. For me, it's just a welcome email. Like, Welcome. I'm so excited for you to start this journey. Here's a couple of tips for your products. This is my story. I love your sponsor. It's never like, hey, I'm taking the place of your sponsor. I'm better than them. Blah, blah, blah. Like, it's none of that. It's like, welcome. You know, it's forming that connection or it's you um, becoming Facebook friends with them, sending them an encouraging message. Hey, I just saw you joined under um, Emily. I love Emily so much. We went to high school together. Um, I helped her get started in Plexus. I just wanted to say congratulations on your choice and um, get to know you. Now, ideally, Emily would just introduce me to this person and she would start a three-way message. I had some conversations with some people today where I found like that wasn't happening. And I'm like, ah, there's a missing link. 
there's not a whole lot of connection. And so we need to have that connection. Jessica is saying, amen, exactly. Okay, so your task then at the beginning of the month should be, who do I not know? Who are my unknowns? How can I get connected to them? Do I need to send an email? Do I need to send a text? Do I need to send a, a message on social media just simply to introduce myself, okay? The next thing is you have to identify what stokes your fire. So step three is stoke your own fire. <laughs> stoke your own fire. Nobody else can do it. Don't wait for the next carrot. Don't wait for the next push. Don't wait for the next plexus incentive. Don't wait for the next Ohana contest. Don't wait for any of that stuff. Figure out what internally motivates you and stoke your own fire. And your momentum will never stop. I've been in almost continuous momentum for three and a half years. I've had a couple of lulls because of personal growth and some mindset stuff that I've shared very openly with you guys, but I've never waited around for my upline to stoke my fire. I've never waited around for my downline to stoke my fire. I am responsible for my own emotions and my own activity. I am responsible, responsible for the internal drive. And so here are some things that you might need to do to get yourself on fire. Okay, maybe you need daily motivational videos. When I was going through um, that challenge, I would go to YouTube and I would search up motivational videos, inspirational videos, belief videos, overcoming fears videos, like whatever key phrase I could think of. And then all these like super pumped up motivational things. And I would go for a walk or a jog and I would listen to it. And then it would, it would pump me up and it would help me to like, get myself into that place where I could get back on the horse. So the other thing might be um, podcasts. Maybe you need to listen to podcasts. Um, maybe you need something that's quieter. Maybe you need meditation. Um, I love Insight Timer. I talk about that. Sarah Blondin. I love, um, oh my gosh, what's the other one? Oh, I can't think of it. He has the accent. Maybe you can help me out if you have it. I can't think of it right now. Um, maybe it's headspace. 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 Um, maybe it is creating specific playlists. I have like two specific playlists that I love, depending on my mood, that can help me to get me into a better mind space to stoke my own fire. I love Spotify. That's what I love. Maybe you're a music person. Maybe you have Apple Music. I don't care. Spend five dollars and ninety nine cents a month and get yourself a Spotify and create your own playlist or something like invest a tiny bit into yourself. Podcasts are free. Motivational videos are free. Um, invest in Audible. Listen to audiobooks. Um, invest in a course or coaching. I know a lot of you guys are doing that. Let me mute all. Somebody got unmuted there. Okay. Um, so you have to figure out what's going to stoke your fire because what happens is you push, 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 push. And then the push is over and it was like this huge rush and this endorphin thing. And then it's over and it's like, uh, oh, now, now what, <laughs> now what do I do? And so you have to automatically, that's why I use that last hour of the month or the very next day to sit down and be like, okay, this is where I'm going next. This is what I'm doing next to plan it out, to keep myself excited, to keep stoking the fire and establishing these routines of putting good in, putting the things in that motivate me internally so that I don't have to wait for Plexus to come along and give me an iPad or an Apple Watch or an extra cash bonus. I don't have to wait for that because I have a bigger purpose and something else that I'm working towards. The next thing I want to say that can help you to keep the momentum going on your team is you obviously have new people that joined you. So why do you have to wait for somebody else's contest? Why can't you create your own small contest or your own fun thing to do? See, sometimes I feel like maybe on our team we have handicapped you guys because we've created so many fun things and contests and trips and all these things. And I want you to just strip it back to the very basics. So 
when I was starting as a senior gold or a Ruby ambassador, we would do contests and give away things like a $10 pair of earrings from Amazon or a blender bottle or a Plexus t-shirt from Etsy or like things that were not super expensive that people would be excited to win. You can create your own contest. Again, it kind of goes back to like stoking your own fire. Well, this is stoking the fire on your team. What can you create on your own team without waiting for mommy and daddy to create it that can motivate and encourage your team to do the activities that you want to see them do? What are the activities you want to see them do? IPA, get togethers, signing people up, building their network. Like those are the four things that are foundational. Again, IPA, hosting get togethers, building your network, signing people up. Those are the four foundational things that you want people doing. So you are your own boss. Create your own contest. Create your own little fun thing and understand that it does not have to cost a lot of money. It really doesn't. If you need creative ideas for inexpensive little gifts, I gotcha. Or you can Google and you can find things or you can go to Amazon and be like gifts under $10. And you can find some cool little trinkets and things that you can give away for, you know, enroll two, get this prize. We used to do things like that or enroll three this month, earn this prize or develop a new silver, earn this prize. And it might seem like a lot of prizes and a lot of things, but do you understand that through the method of doing these things, I've been able to generate two diamond incomes and a sapphire income. Little contests over time, compounded, stoking my own fire, then thinking about what will motivate my team? What will move the needle forward for them? Every team is different. It might be different for Nancy's team than it is for Megan's team. You know your team. So it might mean you don't do what I do. You use your beautiful brain. You are blessed with this amazing machine up here. You have your own great ideas. Use it. You can come up with something fantastic. And if you need some feedback, of course we can help you with that. Um, the next thing, let's see, I'm on number five, I guess. We already kind of talked about this, but this is understanding your investments and talking about money. When I think about money and incentives, and I know this is exactly how I've trained my jewels, is that we will never ask people to invest more than they would make themselves. So for example, when I was going for diamond on my reentry or sapphire on, my, on Thomas's leg, if I offered $40 and it was Janelle for Janelle's person, I would be like, Janelle, of that $40, you just pick up 15 because you'll make $15 back on pay points and it's going to help you go Ruby and I'll do the other 25. So it's okay for me to go into the red, but it's not okay for Janelle to go into the red. And Janelle understands, okay, I'm going to sacrifice some of my pay points and it's just going to be a net even, but I'm going to get my $500 Ruby bonus. So I'm actually in the positive. Okay. Remember my example of target? Do you think target is crying? The next day when they had like $10 billion in sales? No, they're not. They understand that they've got to pay out a little bit to create that growth. So always understand your investments. And when you ask your team members to invest, it's the same thing. It's okay to ask people to give up part of their commission. If they, number one, decided they wanted to do it and they're a willing participant, um, and a lot of times they're going for a goal of their own. None of you guys are victims to anything. You all, if you agree to participate in an incentive, you agree to participate in it, right? And um, one of the funniest things that, well, one of the things that I have learned um, is just to say thank you. If, if somebody offers you an incentive and offers you um, some cash back, like just say thank you. Like be grateful because there are a lot of people that don't do any incentives. There are leaders in the company that only do incentives maybe like once at the end of a contest. And so if you're on a team that understands how to use stackable incentives in a smart way that doesn't make anybody lose money, 
then that's a blessing that you know how to do that because if you use that incentive and you don't just sleep on it and not do anything with it, you can create massive growth on your team. And so if you see an incentive come along and you do nothing with it, it's kind of shame on you because that's like free money that, you know, Plexus will do these incentives. It's the same thing. It's like free money that they're saying, here you go, go and build your business. I'm giving you this free gift and you're just refusing it. And so I just want I want you guys to understand the value in investing in your business and how that can create huge, massive growth. It doesn't mean I'm saying, hey, give everybody $50 off out of your pocket. No way. Never going to tell you to do that. That's not a smart investment. If anybody tells you to do that, not a smart investment. Okay. Um, Phyllis says, we're trying to revive our personal page. We did a series of lives this week, not a lot of participation, and we were giving money and prizes away. I asked team members to tag people in posts, not a lot of consistency. Is it just growing pains? I'll talk about that in a minute, okay? Um, the next thing that you need to get back into after a big push month is literally drop the overwhelm excuse. Drop and drop any of that. I just, just drop it. Just don't, don't tell me you're overwhelmed ever. <laughs> and I say that with all the love in my heart because overwhelm is a choice. Overwhelm is a choice. So we, when we feel an emotion and it feels like overwhelm, we have a choice. And I would say, you know what? Take a deep breath. Dump out on a piece of paper all the things that you need to do and all the things that are on your mind. Download it all and then pull out your planner or your desktop planner and fit everything into the spaces where it goes. And then you are creating what you want to see happen. And overwhelm can disappear. Overwhelm comes from randomness. It comes from flying by the seat of your pants, not knowing what's coming up. I understand it because I used to operate that way. So I can say that with all the love and transparency in my heart is that you have to create a new story. You can't keep saying, I'm just overwhelmed. There's too much going on. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. So you have a choice. If there are certain threads you need to leave, leave them. If, um, if you're not dumping out everything you need to do and putting it into your planner, that's on you. But if you start doing that, you will find that your overwhelm goes down and your productivity goes up and your peace goes up. That's what will happen. Procrastination is like the devil's tool. I used to be the queen of procrastination. So if you are procrastinating, I want you to tell me what are you avoiding? What are you avoiding? What are you afraid of? What are you not owning up to? If you're procrastinating, you're afraid of something, you're avoiding something, you know you need to do something, but there's a fear there. And so you have to go deep down inside and figure out what that is. So overwhelm, not a thing because we are professionals. We're going to dump everything out that we need to do, and then we're going to fit it into where it fits in our schedule throughout the week so that we're going into it with peace and being like, oh, you know what? I've got a place for that. It's on Thursday at 2. And so I'm not even going to think about it until Thursday at 2. It's not even going to enter my mind. Okay, so you've got to get back into a schedule after a big push month and return to the basics. You have to do that, and you need to do it as quickly as possible. What's happened to me is as I've gone through my journey with each rank is it used to take me a long time to get back to the basics because I was just like, oh my gosh, I'm so overwhelmed. That was so hard. I feel like I'm going to die. Oh, I have to figure out all these incentives. Like, oh my gosh, uh, you know, and now I'm like, okay, 24 hours or a weekend. I took the weekend after I went diamond and I was like, okay, I'm ready to get back to it. Like, there's no drama around it. I just outlined what I needed to do and got to work. I needed to create a three-day blitz. I needed to, whatever. I just fit it in the schedule and I got it done. So the things that you need to return to for basics are your daily IPA, daily downtime, 
weekly, daily, and monthly goal setting and focusing on the activity. Focus on the activity. Stay committed to the activity. Don't focus just on the result because you have to exercise a lot of faith, keep doing the activities, keep learning, keep growing, becoming better, focusing on those activities, knowing that the growth will come. Those are the basics that you need to return to. Start using events, plugging people into events, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You really don't. It's not a good use of your time. A better use of your time is pouring into your leaders, encouraging them how to, you know, how to grow, pouring into them to help them grow. Your best use of time is not writing up a different IPA challenge right now or creating your own event right now. It, it just really isn't. You don't have to be in mine or use my group. You can create your own group, but start using copy and paste. It's your friend. It's your friend on events. It's your, and you can add your own flair, but what are the activities that actually grow your business? For you, is it content creation right now? Tell me, is it content creation? No. It's, it's generally not. And I see people that spin in this place of, I'm going to create this content or do that content, or I think the training could be better. So I'm going to change it like that. Meanwhile, they're not personally sponsoring anybody. They're not developing any, any silvers because they are what? They are avoiding. They're afraid. They're avoiding the thing that they actually need to be doing. And they're filling their time with something that they don't need to be doing. So use what's in place. Every Thursday night, we have opportunity events. Um, whatever team you're on, there's probably a three-day or a seven-day or something else. Start rallying your team around these events, getting excited about them, and getting people turned out to them. We used to have masses and masses of people getting into these events or coming to these Zooms or doing these, and that was like crazy momentum. But Sometimes people start to be like, oh, I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that. If it's working for you and it's producing a lot of numbers, awesome. If it's not, your energy and efforts would probably be better used somewhere else. And um, the last thing I want to talk about, um, and then I'll answer those questions, is how do you rebound from big incentives? Is this something that any of you guys struggle with? Is like if you had $50 to $60 to offer last month, how do you rebound from that? And I'll tell you where it begins. It begins with a shift in your mindset. That's, that's literally where it all is. So if you can go to a potential that's your potential or your level two or your level three, and you go into it with a positive mindset about the cost of a 199 pack, and you use a verbiage, verbiage that's positive and you have confidence, and you say, you know what, this package is actually really affordable. I wish they had had this when I started. It's only $199. It retails for $360, so I'm blown away at the savings. And I could probably actually get you $10 or $20 off of that. Like you're not offering the world, but you're saying, oh my gosh, this package is amazing. It has everything you need to address your needs. And I'm really excited because I could probably get you 10 bucks off of this. Plus there's free shipping this month. That'll save you another 12 bucks. What do you think? So a lot of it has to do with your positioning and you becoming really familiar with how much money they're actually saving. And it's a lot. So you don't have to have... 40, 60, 80. Yes, people think $20 and free shipping is a great deal. Absolutely. And so you rebound from those big incentives by scaling it back to something that's like a little bit more reasonable and you change it in the way that you present it. That's really all it is because I will never forget when Natalie Mari did a call a couple months ago, she was one of the speakers and she said, in a coaching session she did with Preston, Preston said, Natalie, no matter how cheap it is, there will always be people that can't afford it. And no matter how expensive it is, there will always be people that will pay for it. What it really has to do with is your confidence, your skill, and how much value and confidence you add to other people. 
So please take that to heart and know you don't need to offer more than 10, 20, $30 off of a $199 welcome pack. And that those really are the welcome packs that you want to build your business on. Shifting your focus to developing silvers is absolutely paramount to you shifting into creating continued momentum on your team. You went through a big push. It's the end of that push month or you're ramping up into a big push this summer. Silvers is the only thing on your mind. 85% of people that go silver are with you a year later. 85%. You want 85% retention? There's your answer. You want 85% of people to love their products and stay on them and get results? There's your answer. Come up with a way to make it attractive to them. Do a gathering. Help them with messages. Tell them you care about them so much that you're not going to let them start on their own because you know they only have about a 50% chance of success because it's really easy to quit on yourself. It's really easy to quit when you don't have accountability. So shifting your focus to create that momentum. Who joined last month? Who can go silver this month? That is your priority. Who is joining this month? How fast can you get them to silver? Can you get them to silver in 24 hours, 48 hours, one week, two weeks? Yes, you can. Move heaven and earth to do that. Okay, so I'm going to go back and shift into these questions. Um, yeah, time management in, in Bob Heilig's LLA. Yes. Okay, so, um, so Phyllis. Yeah, I think it, for your team, it's shifting their mindset on incentives. And um, when we have these trainings, uh, we have these trainings not so I can teach to you, like John Maxwell says, so that I can teach through you. If you're not taking this stuff and then teaching it down to your teams, you're missing out on the power of teaching this information to your downline and you should be raising up leaders. That's what you want to be doing is you're raising up leaders. So make sure that you're teaching this to your downline. As far as getting um, activity going on your page, sometimes you have to do other things that are like non-plexus related. Ask some fun questions. Do a silly contest that has nothing to do with plexus that will get some engagement going. Also, when you get new blood onto your team, Getting new blood active and engaged in the page will start to perk up old blood. And so those are some ways like, you know, just asking, hey, you know, with a graphic or you can put the color behind. It's the weekend. What are your plans? You know, shout out below what you're planning to do or any, any other kind of like fun challenge or thing that you can do to just create a sense of community that doesn't have anything to do with Plexus. You can do that on your team page, but then I really do feel like a new blood is the lifeblood of a team page and keeping it active. Um, let's see. Uh, Phyllis says, I think they almost think there is something wrong with the product when we give so much away. So that's also a mindset thing, right? So whenever there's any kind of crazy incentive like that, I make sure that people know why. So I would say, you know what? We don't have incentives like this hardly ever, but we're going for a really big goal in our organization this month. And that's why you're getting this great deal. This is not the norm for us. So making sure that they know that that's not the norm. Um, Susie says, I've been overwhelmed in my business in the past, but last month I did not feel crazy or overwhelmed at all until 9 p.m. on the 31st. It really just felt like I finally treated this business like a business by working every day, working my plan. Yes, that makes you feel so much more peace. The only feelings of stress that I had last month were maybe like the last two to three days where I was just having a little bit of a faith crisis. But all leading up to that, I knew like I've just laid it out. I've planned it. We've had great incentives and it's just all there. All I can do is do the activity, show up and do the work. And I have to just leave the rest up to trust. Harmony said she signed someone up this morning with a 199, explained she was getting all that I take in more for way less than I pay. Yes. The next month we will streamline her order and tailor it. Yeah. I usually will say, you know, um, next month you'll typically order between a hundred and $150 depending on what products you love best. So I make sure they know they're not paying $239 and 95 cents every single month. Um, anybody have any other questions that they kind of want to talk about while you've got me here? 
Was that helpful? It really just is about taking ownership and not shutting down because I have, from very early on, I decided that this was a business and people were waiting for me to show up. And so I forfeited my right to not show up a long time ago. I forfeited my right to stop working my business for 10 days a long time ago. And there are other people's lives that depend on that. They expect me to show up, whether it's that they need this business and they need help building it. It's my responsibility to show up and help them. Or it's somebody that desperately needs these products. I forfeited my right a long time ago. The moment I signed up my first ambassador and told them to trust me and hop on board with me, I forfeited that right. And in forfeiting that right and, and showing up every day, every week, I've taken some vacations, obviously, and there are times when I work less than others. Remember that concept of 60 to 90 day push? Yes, right? You do need breaks. You need white space and all that stuff. But, um, you know, that might seem like a lot of sacrifice and that might seem heavy and that might be like, oh, I don't want to do that. Like, that seems stressful. It is a pure joy. It is so fulfilling and it is my honor to do that. And when you show up for people in their life, you get more added to your life. You get way more added to your life, not just in a bigger paycheck, but in friendships, in relationships, and the impact you can have on the world. It far outweighs the amount of effort you have to put into your business. I can look at every single one of you and know that I love you and I know you personally and I believe in you. And I wouldn't be here if that wasn't the case. But I have to show up. I have to be on a call whether I want to be on a call or not. I have to show up and do my IPA whether I feel like it or not because somebody is out there waiting for me to show up on my A game or at least on my B game, maybe sometimes on my C game. But you get the point. Like, you don't have to show up perfect. You just have to show up. And you've got to set that schedule. Return to the basics. Take accountability. Stoke your own fire. Stop waiting for somebody else to do it. It'll never happen. It'll never happen. You are your own best cheerleader and your own best motivator any day. So, anyways, love you. <laughs> any other questions? <laughs>